I cooked a ham the other day. It was one of the spiral hams. They always turn out so nice. And with the bone inside, it's so good to have that after and make a bean soup. This one uh, has some good chunks of ham left on it. And I would say that with bean soup, you don't want to get too creative. The classic bean soup is always so delicious. And I'm not going to deviate very far from that. My bean soup today will have a little bit of a Tuscan twist because I use kale and uh, a pinch or two of Italian seasonings, but that's it. I'm not going to get any more creative than that because bean soup all by itself is so, so delicious. Anyway, this is the ham bone. And I'm going to put in here, this is another little piece of it. Let's get the heat going on the burner. Right now there's no liquid in here. I'm going to put that in now. I have a quart here of liquid. It is uh, half water and half, in this case, turkey broth. You could use uh, chicken broth. Uh, you could even use beef broth, any kind of, of broth, pork. But this is turkey and water, and it's a quart of it. It doesn't fully cover that bone, but I will turn it through the cooking and, and simmering process so that it gets nicely cooked up. I'm going to get a lid on this after the first two or three minutes. And uh, this will have to uh, simmer and boil for, I'd have to say, uh, half hour, maybe even an hour. It just depends on how high or low the temperature is. But watch it, let it simmer, and then you can tell when it's done because the ham will be falling off of that bone. The ham that's left on there won't be sticking. It's going to be coming off and you'll know. So I'll show you when we're ready for the next step. I've moved my soup to the burner on the stove so that I'd have some room here to show you what I'm doing in the meantime while that is simmering. I'm getting the uh, celery and carrots and onion together. I think uh, chefs would call that a mirepoix if I'm thinking correctly. Anyway, this is what I'm going to be doing while that is simmering. I've got a hot pan and uh, a little bit of olive oil, about a cup of onions, uh, a medium onion will be just fine in here. I need a spatula. And we'll get that going. We just need to soften these vegetables. Not caramelized particularly. So it's onion, there's two medium carrots. These seem like a little bit smaller than medium, but that's enough carrots. A third of a cup maybe that is. Uh, two ribs of celery chopped. And we'll let this go. Down a little bit. And I've got a bay leaf. I use fresh bay leaves because I grow a bay tree in my living room. But most of the time you're going to have dried bay leaves and then you may want two of them. There's a little more flavor in the fresh. Two cloves of garlic. I don't want to go too heavy on the garlic. Bean soup doesn't need very much of that at all. Keep this one. And I had a tomato, one tomato on the counter that was just begging to be added. Sometimes these soups get a little bit extra, it's a hint of color. It's not enough to turn the soup red, but just a little hint of color by adding a, a little bit of tomato, and it does add some juice to it. And I will simmer these for about five minutes. Six. Okay, I'm done simmering the bone and I've turned the pan off and brought it over here to where you can see the rest of what I'm doing. 
This is the ham bone. You can see the little pieces that have loosened and they're hanging off. There's a nice chunk of ham all through here. Here you can see the gristle is literally peeling away from the bone. That tells you that it's done. Most of the flavor came out of this and into the soup and broth. While that was simmering, I did add another two cups of water. I could see that it needed it, so I added another two cups of water to that. Now I will uh, remove some of the larger chunks of this beautiful ham and put it back into the pot and let it simmer with the soup. And do that. Some of them will just come off with my, they're so tender that uh, they literally come away just with my fingers. It's still fairly hot, but I let it cool a few minutes before I decided to handle it. And that's most of it. I might get a little more off later, but that's most of it. So I'll put that in here. Uh, oh, here's something I want to add to the soup. I've got some mushrooms here. There was about three medium-sized mushrooms. Uh, they were in the box in the refrigerator, and they had kind of half dried out. Now, ordinarily, you just grab those and uh, throw those out, but really don't do that. The mushrooms that have gotten a little bit dry like that are a little wrinkled and spongy, have double the mushroom flavor that fresh ones do. So they're going into the soup. Even though they aren't on the recipe, mushrooms are good in everything, aren't they? <laughs> All right, so this is ready to go. I've got the added mushrooms in there. A teaspoon of basil, or not basil, a teaspoon of oregano. You could use basil, but oregano is my favorite spice in here. That's what I put in, oregano. Now I have two cans of white beans. These are great northerns. Navy beans would be just as good. Uh, cannellini beans. The uh, true Italian bean would be fine in here too. But generally what I find in the store is the great northerns are the navy beans. Those go in there. I'm returning now the uh, mirepoix, the carrots and celery and, and tomato and onions that were simmered. They go into the soup. And set that aside. Let's see if we're forgetting anything. I'll get the heat going. And yes, I have here four cups of chopped, fi chopped finely chopped kale and just loosely packed into here. They'll shrink way down when they cook. It looks like a lot, but it really isn't. I'm gonna put the kale into the soup. That needs to cook and simmer, because kale is not a tender vegetable, but it is one of the superfoods, and it is delicious, and in soups it's fantastic. So when this cooks down, you're going to really enjoy the taste, and you're getting all kinds of uh, wonderful uh, antioxidants and vegetable uh, vegetables vitamins and minerals by having the kale in this soup I'll be back to show you after it simmers for a while my soup is done let's turn the heat off and remove this all right the only thing I might add at this last minute is a little pepper I did not add additional salt. I think there's enough when you're using ham. Uh, you can go by taste and see if your soup needs any salt. This is gorgeous and it's finished. I will ladle it up and we'll take a closer look. That looks lovely. There's our bay leaf. I can remove that. 
and I'll top it with just a little bit of Parmesan cheese, grated Parmesan cheese. After all, this is a Tuscan version of bean soup. Now, we'll take a closer look at it. Doesn't that look gorgeous? I can't wait to taste it. Mm. 